Let's talk about Wide Awake. Um, how did it happen? How did All right. this book Henry come into Morrow. being? Henry Morrow. Started with Henry Morrow. He was a poet very active here in the late 80s or um, into the mid 90s, then retired from poetry. Perhaps he got a little disillusioned, which I do often get disillusioned about every, every second month. Yeah, six times a year I get a little bit disillusioned with poetry. Then I come back, so the same <laughs> with him. He came back several years later, and this time with a new sense of purpose and a new energy and vitality for the project. And now that he had developed his poetry and become a well-read, accomplished poet, and so he joined the board of Beyond Baroque. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point during his tenure in that board, and I was on the board too, and he decided that with his wife that they would put up some money, some of their money, to found what finally became, after we tossed it around and tried all different kinds of names, the Pacific Coast Poetry Series. Mm -hmm. And then came upon the idea of a Los Angeles anthology, because there has not been one since around 96, Grand Passion, which I edited with Charles Webb, came out in 96, 1997. It was one of the 100 best books of the year, LA Times Book Review. And that's almost 20 years, not quite, 18 years, something like that. So there's a whole generation, a whole new, and the world has changed. Poetry is completely different, so, so much better. If it had gotten worse, I wouldn't want to do an anthology. I don't, just leave that one, let's leave it alone for right now. But it's so much better now. Um, more talent, more talent. Better poets, better poems, and it very changed, and much more cross-cultural than ever before. I was very struck by the cover, I mean the cover photo, which is an amazing, an amazing panoramic shot from yeah. uh, obviously very up high and you can see. Dave Jurasevich, Dave Jurasevich, an astrophotographer. Oh my goodness. Who, who, uh, quite a, an accomplished photographer who has beautiful image. I, I, was trying to figure out what image can I put on this cover that is not going to be too narrow, too specific, and has n uh, no cliches. I want no cliches. I don't want, first rule is it can't have palm trees, no palm trees. I, I don't want the Hollywood sign. I do not want the Walk of Fame stars on the Hollywood Boulevard. And I don't want the uh, Stahl House case number 22 house, you know, what mm -hmm. I think people don't always know it by its name, but they know it the second they see it, o overhanging mm -hmm. the cliff with two uh, women with full skirts in the 19, late 1950s maybe, um, early 1950s, I'm not sure, and that, that iconic image. It can't be any of those iconic images that we're used to seeing. So then I realized I'm talking about uh, an aerial view of the city and the magisterial quality of the city, the breathtaking, well, incredibly beautiful, incredibly beautiful. Oh my God, to see Los Angeles from the air, but also frightening. So what's frightening. the height involved in seeing Los Angeles from the air in this photo? It's, it's a Mount Wilson Observatory. That's so where you're seeing it from. 7,000 so feet uh, Yeah, so you're somewhere. seeing it from Mount Wilson Observatory, and you're seeing uh, Mars, Jupiter, it's uh, Jupiter, Venus, and the moon, the way they had sort of converged that day, and this beautiful, this new moon. And, um, and when I saw Dave, I looked at a bunch of them. I looked at lots of photographs, and I saw that one by Dave J. Jurasevich, and I went, oh, well, that's as beautiful. It's, as it's going it's to get. Going to and I ran it past Henry, and then my uh, assistant editor, Liz Camfield. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they went, yeah, that's frightening, alien, gorgeous, mysterious, mm -hmm. unknowable, all that stuff. Uh, uh, yes, it is. And I wanted to ask about that frightening, mysterious, unknowable, quality and it's obviously nighttime and there's sort of this nimbus of light laying yeah. over it and the title wide awake so wide awake in this case means 
And I, and as you know, I go into this a little bit in, in my intro. Um, words and phrases that we hear associated with Los Angeles are La La Land, mm -hmm. uh, dream, a dream, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, Dreamers, Dream City. Um, the Dream Machine, and it's Lotus all land. Lotus Land, Lotus Land. So it's all sort of about being um, anesthetized, dreaming, dreaming dreams that are probably not going to happen for you. There's always that feeling it's yeah, not going to happen. Uh, foolish people go there. Um, and so when I look at these poems, I see how alert, how smart, how savvy they are, how wised mm -hmm. up, and how aware of their environment. Each of these poets aware of his and her environment, also the paradoxes and the contradictions within their environment, the pathos within mm -hmm. their environment, the unintentional comedy, the intentional comedy, all of that. And that's what poets are supposed to do. That's what they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And that's what they are in this city, mm -hmm. as probably in other cities, too. So um, speaking of the poems, I, I was struck the other day at the Lamas Day Festival that you talked about that first poem, and oh, Hilda yeah. Weiss um, on the freeway, yeah. looking at the mountains and learning from them. And then you mentioned the last poem. So yeah. one poem yeah. you're going in, it's yeah. a Laura Seiko freeway, and then the last poem, somebody's running. Can you sort of well, so, address going yeah. First in First thing and that, that I anthology. decided, as with Grand Passion, the other anthology I edited back in the 90s, I, I'm not at all interested in putting the poets in alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna, not gonna happen with me. Um, and so I spent about, a, two and a half days, just in solitary confinement, more or less, with stacks and stacks of poems around me, putting them together and putting stacks of poems together that seemed to talk to each other in a certain mm -hmm. way that maybe f could follow each other, telegraph something back and forth to each other. And then, uh, and I, the whole time I'm thinking, I'm nowhere, I am nowhere, until I have a poem that opens this anthology and a poem that closes mm -hmm, this anthology. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there's not going to be an anthology because can't, I can't close it and I can't open it. And I, I knew just from reading the poems that, that it was in there. And, and I'm, as soon as I saw Hilda's, I called Those Hills, I thought, OK, that is a strong candidate. And then I knew that the end had to be quite opposite that. So what's happening in the beginning, first of all, it's very, it's very simple poem. It's very easy to understand. Anybody who's intimidated by, and I needed a poem to open it that would be not intimidating to people who have not read a lot of poetry and maybe don't have an MFA in creative writing and are not up in literary theory. They have to be able to understand it. But at the same time, if it's somebody who's fairly sophisticated about poetry, they can't look at, and, Keep in mind, there's, I mean, we know there's no poem that everybody's going to love, no matter what you do. And some people won't like the first poem, or they won't like the last poem, or something. But it should be a poem that gives people the sense this is going to be a collection of accomplished poets. And then for the end, as soon as I saw uh, it, it's a William Marchilla's poem, and I went, well, that's the poem. Uh, set in East L.A., uh, the memories of his youth, his sort of wild youth in East L.A., a, a mischievous life, living a somewhat mischievous life, not, 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 you know, doing anything bad, but with his high school buddies. And the, he, the, he's remembering one young guy who maybe didn't make it or didn't make, we don't know, because he just went moving on down the line. And then Henry, Having come out of El Salvador at age 12, he was a refugee from El Salvador and the very terrible civil war there. Um, grows up in Los Angeles among these other kids, some who don't mm -hmm. make it, and then he becomes a teacher, uh, a poet who just won a huge literary award, also one that comes with a nice amount of money. and. Uh, has just had his second book out and is on his way to becoming an extremely noted poet. Looking back and thinking of the kid that 
that he knew, and it, it ends up when he's just running, just running through East mm -hmm. LA. And that's mm -hmm. how you get out of the anthology. You begin, she's looking at a climb, at the possibility of climbing those hills. You know, where someday we're gonna climb those hills. Uh, Cause they back, what did she say? Back, she, they back up against the sky like teenage boys or something. I'm gonna actually turn to it at least yes. because I have seen them, I have seen them brass back the sun like teenage boys and cup the moon in their night dress like your granny. All right, this could not be written. This is a line that could not be written by an amateur poet or a hobbyist poet. And then again, and then you get at the end the teenage boys, the teenage boy but they're not running. climbing; they're just they're, running. they're just running with who knows chasing them. Mm -hmm. And I went, that's how we get, it. and that's how we get in. Yeah. And in between, all these other things happen. Yeah, so, and in between, yeah. you again you between you get the, the city. All speak in between, to one another. yeah, I try as much as possible. I can't always do it. There's places, quite a few places, where I can't necessarily get one poem to follow another poem in, in an interesting way. All I can do is not jolt and jar the reader so that uh -huh. if they've come to a very melancholy place, they're not sort of violently yanked out of that or something like that. But there's sections where I feel it's more successful in getting the poems to kind of talk to each other or in some way um, speak to each other, uh -huh. not always in an obvious way. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. I, yeah. As I read through the anthology, I felt that it was very successfully woven together, poem to poem to poem. There's places, I just want to mention this, that, and I think this is why I marked this one little spot in here I wanted to talk about. Every now and then, this is for the benefit of people who are reading this, uh, or ever wondering, why, 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 why did she put that poem after this other poem, which doesn't seem to go at all? Sometimes I want to change the mood, mm -hmm. and I want to just shift out of that mood. Mm -hmm. So, and, and one of the, the dramatic places I did this with Mike Songson's Villanelle, uh, and he has, and his Villanelle, the two, it's very calming. Yes. It's very yeah. soothing, it's slow, and the word slow appears again and again, the two, lines that are repeated in the villanelle is uh the are uh most of the time the dry creek slow um and arts and crafts flourished in the arroyo seco somewhere he says the water runs low the underground water flow all of that but the dry creek slow and then so we're in la we're in east the eastern part of la somewhere that's you know low running not very famous river, the LA River. And then I just wanted to just leave there and go someplace, another whole part of the world, just and a, with a completely different energy, a burst of joy, this just wild, unbridled burst of absolute joy in one of those moments that are so rare in life. And in the David St. John poem, it's in the early part of the 20th century, they're in Paris. Yes. They've just come out of a nightclub. And it's one of those occasions where the world is perfect. Your life is perfect and mm -hmm. opens into endless possibilities with reward after reward richness after richness, mm -hmm. one sensory pleasure after another. And those moments tend not to last <laughs> that <laughs> long. You wake up the next morning with a hangover. That's, it ends there. But anyway, and I just wanted that to sort of put those two sensations yes. back, to, yeah. back to back. Yeah. So that's a, a real shift right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So, and yours follows. You, do you want to comment, uh, Marsha, on why you think uh, your poem, uh, the, which we love, think? so does Eddie Muller love it. Eddie Muller loves your poem. I'm so jealous. Eddie <laughs> Muller, the, the prince of noir, or was it the, the, the czar of noir? That's what they call the, him. Czar the czar of, of noir. noir. And he loves your poem, Janet Lee is Afraid of Jazz. God, that's a good damn mother. Good poem. 
Jesus. And uh, do you know why? I, does it make sense to you why it comes after David Hernandez's? Um, is it generally? Yes, because it's, yes, because okay. in David Hernandez's poem, it references one girl, five men. Yeah, it's, it's also about, about uh, the capability of men to do violence yeah, to women what, and each other, too, and obviously. I'm but amazed women, at what yeah. our hands could do to a girl. Yeah. And then Janet Lee and, then and what happens to a her touch of at the, evil. Ate, the yeah. Hotel and, 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 just the, and not just there, but in the shower, in talk about having things done to you. Um, so it's they both, in a very unexpected way, an utterly unexpected, Non polemical, non programmatic way talk about male violence against women. But it's not preachy. It's not, um, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't make any expected turns, but it does illuminate us about that fact of the world. Yeah. Um, well, that sort of brings me to my next question, which is about the uh, David Oling review and that the issue of what brings me there is expected turns and unexpected turns. Mm -hmm. Because he, he said, well, he thought it was maybe piecing together an aesthetic of Los Angeles. And then he began to try to piece together what he meant by that, and his first comment yeah, was very, yeah. offhand. Yeah. It's an offhand aesthetic. Yeah. And then he went on a little and he said, well, maybe by that I mean self-aware. And so I wanted to come back to that, that juxtaposition of offhand, self-aware, piecing things together, looking beneath surfaces, and see what you thought. Do you feel like there is an aesthetic, does offhand or self-aware, um, e yeah. any of those words yeah. describe it, and um, how do you feel? Um, David Eulen, literary uh, editor of the LA Times, mm -hmm. um, wrote a it was beautiful piece, very warm, very generous piece, um, favorable throughout, and, and it was a very nice surprise, because it's danged hard. In fact, it's worse than danged hard. It's damned hard to get attention for any exactly. publication that contains poetry, um, especially Los Angeles poetry. And so um, I, he said, yeah, he, he, did, uh, he said offhand, and he was looking, he was doing a hard thing, which is trying to find some one thing that ties all these mm -hmm, poems mm -hmm. together. And of course, there are so many different little factions, coteries, schools, sensibilities within this gigantic this city that goes on, what, second biggest city in the country and one of the biggest cities in the world. So naturally there's, and there's people who have, who draw from very different influences mm -hmm. and people who have different kinds of training or, um, offhand, I, 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 some of them are, I think he meant there's a naturalness about them. There's a, they don't seem, hardly any of them seem labored or overworked, mm -hmm. although a lot of them are deceptively simple. They might look deceptively simple to write, but they aren't. Um, and I think probably in general, and then you have to try to separate out what's going on in Los Angeles that is different or the same as what's going on in poetry, contemporary poetry across the country. And certainly there are a lot of poets who are somewhat interested in capturing the quality of improvisational or in the moment conversation mm -hmm. and in the moment naturalness. And then the degree to which the language is, is really compacted um, varies from poet to poet. Um, I, I think that it's going to be a struggle to find something that ties all the poems together. I think the best anybody can do is notice that certain elements might recur, where you see something and then several pages later, several poems down the line, you go, oh, there's that again, that thing. And it can either be stylistic or it can 
pertain to subject matter or mm -hmm. could pertain to imagery. I mean, certainly the freeways and what the poets do with the freeways. I mean, it's fabulous. It's fabulous mm -hmm. what they do and never the same thing twice. I mean, it would be dull if every poem was, or even more than two poems were saying, oh, here I am, stuck on the freeway again, rush hour, why did I, why did I take the 101 between four and, and, and practically any time? <laughs> I mean, you know, if that, if we got that, that would just be so boring, but it's, it's, they're, po they're damn good poets. They're doing all kinds of things with the freeways, you know, it just becomes something that traces through these poems constantly changing. And I like that. I mentioned that, I think, in the introduction, that yes, there are certain things that you see. Palm trees, you're gonna see them and see them and see them, and you will never, not one time, in this anthology, are you gonna see the palm tree in the same way twice? Sometimes mm -hmm. they're grotesque. Sometimes they're otherworldly. Sometimes they're just these sort of domesticated little plants that are part of an, our mm -hmm. environment. Sometimes they, they um, are ominous. I mean, all the, and in every case, the poet really successfully makes their case for seeing the palm tree in that way, mm -hmm. or other trees. And that's not the only tree. We, we also forget there's a whole bunch of other trees in here, and they, they're doing other things. So. so you're making the case for an aesthetic that is multifarious and various and polygonal. I, I do mention that in my intro also that something that came up an unusual number of times is um, religion and spirituality and gods and goddesses, not just a god but also gods and this awareness of the mix of religions um, mm -hmm. seems to be, have surfaced since I did Grand Passion. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see that to the same degree in Grand Passion. Yeah. So, so there, in my, there in my introduction, what I'm trying to do the best in my ability is make a case for there's something, there's a way that the poets of Los Angeles are in conversation with the, the other poets across the country about what can poetry do, what does it mean mm -hmm. in, in the world that we're living in now, what are its capabilities, but also there may be some things shaping up here because of the nature of the history, because of the very specific nature of this landscape that are that are also distinctive, mm -hmm. that you will find more of this particular mm -hmm. element here than somewhere else. Okay. And then my choices too, because yes. somebody else could do a poem. Somebody else had edited this, it would be all different poems. It would just be, it would be totally different. So it's, so it's, sort of my, the lens it's my, of your mind. my ideas about things mm -hmm. are, are also expressed in this. Well, why don't you share something about what you've been doing or poems from the book or... All right, so I, I should also mention that after a long dry spell where uh, I didn't publish very much, I mean, I published my individual poems in magazines, literary journals, but did not publish a book for a long time. All of a sudden, in the spirit of it never rains but it pours, which I wish it would, now here, what rain, please, let it rain. Please, but anyway, yes. so all of a sudden, at least it rained publications for me, and within about the space of seven, eight months, I had three come out. Wide right Awake came out in April. By the way, that was about 18 months that we spent sort mm -hmm. of in the assembling of it. And again, thanks to my, Liz Camfield, my brilliant and Valuable, isn't it interesting that valuable and invaluable mean the same thing? Yes. My valuable, uh, the assistant direct uh, editor and Henry Morrow, the funder, came out in April. This also came out in April. The Poetry Mystique Master Class Inside the Contemporary Poetry Workshop is a very unusual book that I wrote with my students. Uh, of, of tracing the evolution of individual poems from the earliest to the latest oh, with my notes and my input and how I, w the ways that I was involved in shaping mm -hmm. the poems. These are very advanced mm -hmm. students who are publishing their poems. They're not just students, they're professional poets publishing mm -hmm. all over. Larry Colker is in there, uh, uh, Kathy Sandstrom, uh, so many, Larry, uh, oh, a bunch of people, um, Mary Fitzpatrick's in here. Uh, and then my book, which won a thing called the Blue Lynx mm -hmm. Poetry Prize, 
came out in the fall, open 24 hours. And so you can, you can just buy all of them and read them together <laughs> and kind of, that would be nice. What a good idea. I'm in favor of that idea. Buy all three. Or you could get them from the library, too. Good to support your local library. Would you like to share anything from any of these books? Oh, I think why don't I just, uh, I think I'll just read your poem. I'm just going to read Janet Lee is Afraid of Jazz, okay, which follows as we were saying. Do I have time to read it? I, it goes fast anyway. All right. So as some of us know, Janet Lee was in two great, great movies. She was in a lot of great movies, but her two noir movies were Psycho, where she was killed in the shower after absconding with some money. Um, and then uh, the next is she was, I'm afraid, horribly uh, uh, violated in a hotel in uh, Tijuana, right? Was it Tijuana? Border, border, border town? Yeah. Border town, right. And uh, there's jazz in the background in the uh, touch of evil, right? Jazz playing, touch that's right. Evil. That was one of the problems. They wouldn't turn down the jazz. It got louder and louder and louder in the room next door where she's been left alone. Janet Lee is afraid of jazz. For Eddie Muller, the voices that swim through the music offering something forbidden, close up, the dark arms of the horn player, his skin fitting him sleek as a shark suit, clasping the sax, lifting as its sound descends in long sizzling lines like wires arcing out, empty eyes sliding up and back to the halo of the spot, motes drifting. It makes her want to run like it could tear her apart, a man at each limb lifting her off the bed at the Ote Mesa Motel, all of them dressed in black and the music never letting up its dazzling spun out phrases. If she could run, she would under the shadowy arcade as the camera pans wide, but she's hobbled by her tight skirt, the staccato of high heels tapping the rhythm on the uneven street, her breast heaving under cashmere, dog collar of pearls around her perfect neck while the sea crashes in the near distance. We know she's doomed by music cloudburst of percussion on the windshield, then silence the cameras wheeling around. And Bates Motel appears, lit up on the sign. It's the way every aperture turns into another eye, and the shower won't stop running until long after she's died. We know she's doomed chords shifting darkly, but she persists, carrying on with her share of sorrow, changing into black lingerie and skipping town if she has to, ending finally there, wherever the heart of trouble happens to be. Okay. No, beautifully read. <laughs> okay, that's, the, what a good poem that is. Well, Dang. thank you. Would All you right. like to read one from all uh, right, if I, if I have time, I'm going to just do the, and again, as we all know, I'm very careful about how I open and how I close, and, and so this is from the, uh, lived on a, in a tenement for 15 years on Vermont Avenue, North, the Northeast, no, East Hollywood, East Hollywood in the unfashionable area below Sunset Boulevard, and uh, there were a lot of car crashes there, and I slept dressed because sometimes I had to run out on, into, for all kinds of reasons, had to run out in the middle of the night, by the way, I did, because something was going on in the building, <coughs> or <coughs> in this case, there was a car crash. Hot pursuit. It wasn't just the grind of breaks, cry of metals unforgiving each other. No, it was that delirious and slow plowing headlong into and past traffic like street lamp, then the disruption of parked truck that got me out of bed and down four flights of stairs onto the street. The rubble of smashed glass makes the sidewalk shine. The traffic lights lying knocked flat. One cop car stopped behind the spot, the others in pursuit. The kid hit the ground and took off by foot. Everyone's drained out of the donut shop, the Armenian dance hall, owl drugs, homeboys in t-shirts with blue tattoos. In LA, it gets like this at night, hot. 
We stare at the parked truck that got punched from the back, then at the criminal car. Under the flung hood, the motor stamps and steams. Look at that bumper! We got that twisted wheel! And the glove compartment sprung. So the deeds of legal ownership drift out the driver's side. The driver's doors sprung wide. It's like so ajar. It's like Chamberlain sculptures from crushed cars. Here is the art of disaster, the art of the split second fatal bad choice. I know how our mistakes change the shape of things, but to look at the twist and turns the kid put in that Ford coupe, you'd think what he wanted really was to make a crazy staircase and climb up. Um, this guy. Uh, uh, Lee Rossi, the poet Lee Rossi in Northern California, just wrote a beautiful review of this. Beautiful Wonderful. review for the Los Angeles Review. It's, it's online. Gosh, it's a nice review. No bad things in it. That's just great. good things. All Correct. right, Marsha. Well, thank you so much. Did we for did we get did we say all the important this. things? That I think the camera. I, took, I think you should stand on your head so the camera no, can see your, your red shoes. <laughs> your, she has everybody. She has these amazing, <laughs> just these cherry red <laughs> shoes from from Paris. And I'm not standing someday. on my head. <laughs> no, but so. they are amazing. And someday, if you go to enough of her, she will wear them, and you will see yes. them. All right. All right, thank you. All right. Okay, Phil, we're done. <laughs> Did we get it in there? I don't know.